Hello and welcome back. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Today we are going to be taking a look at Tinto Talk number four, aka Project Caesar, which is code name for what everyone believes is very likely to be EU5. Um, in this, uh, they are going to talk mainly about governments. It's a very short dev diary, but before, uh, we're going to just keep uh, looking into some of the ideas regarding the start date of the game and also the end date. Um, at this point, I think that I am more interested in what the end date is going to be because the start date is starting to feel pretty nailed down. It it does seem to be kind of a Europa-esque normally uh, start date. It would be very strange now at this point, I think, for them to release a game that isn't Europa Universal Solace 5 that has a start date uh, that is close to what it is appearing to be. So first up, uh, coming back into the previous Tinto talk, uh, someone who has a better knowledge of India commented that the 1356 start date that I had mentioned um, is not correct. Now, I don't know who's correct, either the person who's arguing the 1356 start date uh, via taking a look at India and taking a look at the pop numbers or the person who told me that it's but uh, before 1347 but after 1333 because there's a particular country that is not on the map an Indian country um, so so uh, they think it's in the range of 1333 to 1347. Also taking a look through the previous dev diary, um, this uh, census data uh, regarding uh, Tarragona, um, this indicates that the it, the game is going to be before 1492, which is something we mentioned, but a viewer pointed out that the Jews were exiled uh, from this area in 1492, and so the presence of Jews seems to indicate uh, that they are not going to be exiled. Somewhere in here, the Lutheran uh, religion was mention uh, Lutheran up here, which indicates uh, that uh, the game is at least extending to 1507, which isn't too much of a surprise to anyone, but just wanted to point this out. This is giving us a data point. Uh, someone pointed out that this is a Byzantian census. I'm not sure exactly what makes it Byzantian. Uh, I think it's maybe the Bogomilism, which is only present in Byzantium. I'm not 100% sure if someone knows why this is a Byzantium census, but this indicates this is before the fall of Byzantium. And finally, and this to me is the biggest piece of information. Uh, people were pointing out that the fashion uh, of this man down here, who is quite fashionable, shout out to the man, um, he, this is a rough color. And the color was fashionable uh, between the 17th and 18th centuries, which indicates the game is at least going to kind of 1700-ish uh, time if they're going to be, um, you know, uh, if they're going to be including uh, the rough color, but also probably throughout that entire century, because why would you include a fashion that is only present uh, or only becoming present in your game at the very end and so this indicates that the game will probably extend uh, pretty far if it's going to the 18th century right it's going into the 1700s uh, and so at this point uh, I really hope that it extends just completely flush with the Victoria 3 start date so if anyone finds anything that indicates you know 1800s later uh, what exact date that this game might be ending on, which I think is going to be incredibly difficult to find any sort of information like that. That, for me, is going to be the very, uh, very, very neat investigatory information. Okay, so let's get into the Tinto Talk itself. Welcome to the fourth iteration of Tinto Talks. He didn't wish us a happy Wednesday. Terrible. Today we'll give you an overview of the different mechanics of the government of uh, different mechanics of the government part of the game. There will be development diaries going into much more detail early on. This is largely a teaser. First of all, we have uh, five different government types, which determine a fair uh, bit of the type of mechanics you will get access to. Uh, an example: uh, a republic does not uh, have access to royal marriages. A steps horde has a different view on how war, peace, and conquest work so maybe no war exhaustion, something like this, uh, compared to other types of countries. We have a monarchy, which uses legitimacy, a republic, which uses republican tradition, a theocracy, which uses devotion, a step horde, which uses horde unity, and a tribe, which uses tribal cohesion. Already, this, again, looks like EU5, but I think we're kind of... Uh, they're saying it without saying it, it seems to... Well, I mean, I don't necessarily think they're saying it, but everyone's... Con there's enough contextual hints. Here's an illustration from the game. Looks pretty neat. Um, these, uh, together with countries' uh, rank, government reform, and local flavor, give countries uh, names like the Crown of Aragon. So, again, another hint. Aragon, present, uh, you know, before a certain date. Uh, Kingdom of Sweden, Principality of Wales. And not all countries are go going to be based on owning locations 
on the map, though. More on that in later Dev Diaries. Each country also has a ruler, or they may be in a regency there, if there are no possible adult heirs. Uh, one of the most impo uh, defining parts of the government and country in Project Caesar is the estates mechanic, which we have seen in previous Europas. Uh, this has been... Uh, or European Universalis. This has been uh, one of the core parts of the game with a full connection uh, between the population and the estates. Now, this is, for me, uh, a little bit of a hint. This has been one of the core parts of the game. The game is not out yet, and to me, this implies a continuity with EU4, slightly with the has-been um, here instead of a uh, will be. Uh, and so I think you could take this as a little bit of a hint um, at something that we've kind of already received plenty of hints towards. Uh, keeping the estates uh, satisfied while keeping their powers low is an important part of the game pay gameplay loop. Fantastic. In this game, estates are also active entities and will do things on their own if they gain enough power. Uh, we Here we have uh, the Pashas, we have autocracy, uh, and we can see uh, monthly progress towards to is aristocracy. Uh, Progress to aristocracy, uh, plus 10, I don't know what that means, crown power, plus 10, uh, nobles power, plus 100, unrest, uh, minus 100, okay. Two government reforms, one culture specific and one government specific. So I'm guessing this is monarchy in uh, India, is that Pashas? I'm not sure if Pashas is India or if it's the Middle East. Um, as time passes, different reforms and reform slots uh, will be available. They will also be based on tag, culture, and religion. And this to me is really cool if we're going to have a bunch of dynamic different choices. Like one of my... Um, one of my complaints about uh, Victoria 3 is often that uh, if I do a run in one place and I do a run in another place, it like feels uh, relatively similar. And this is something I always liked about EU4. The bonuses and stuff uh, did encourage different types of play. And so you would have to rethink through what the meta is for your what you're doing um, uh, based on what your bonuses might be. Now, to be fair, uh, not anywhere near as good uh, or I was never as good at EU4, I think, at this point that I am at Victoria 3. So maybe it's just a misunderstanding of the game and we're just not supposed to play to our religion. We're just supposed to religion swap. Uh, but I do think that, um, you know, stuff, uh, stuff being different based on culture, tag, religion and stuff um, it leads to better replayability in general. Okay, language of pleading. Here we have court language, a monthly progress towards serfdom, uh, peasant estate satisfaction, equilibrium. Oof, please use equilibrium in games. Uh, use the word. Don't swap this out for a different word. We love the equilibriums. Uh, peasant power minus 20%. Because um, stuff is an equilibrium. It's an economic... Yeah, okay. Uh, monthly progress to free subjects. Try not to get caught up on the economics. Uh, noble estate satisfaction, uh, equilibrium. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Okay, these are two possible uh, possibilities in the law, language of pleading for the country I tested. Um, okay, I'm not sure what country that would be, what this might imply. Uh, something is uh, that is different from the reform is what I call a law. A law can have several different policies you pick from. Several laws have different unique policies only available to certain tags, religions, cultures, governments, types, or other factors. Um, and so this is interesting. Uh, because if we can put in a bunch of laws too, that's super cool. I can't remember if that's in EU4. I feel like it's not. Um, you could definitely put in laws in CK3. There's definitely laws in Victoria 3. And adding more texture and nuance to how you can decide to have your setup is always super nice, especially if there are reasons to go one thing over another. There's some drawbacks to adding new reforms or policies, though, as it takes years to have a full effect, depending on your country's administrative uh, efficiency. Yes, it's a name for something else in another game, but it fits here. Administrative efficiency. Isn't that from EU4? Um, yes, it's a name for something else in another game, but it fits here. Hmm. But it's it's talking about okay. I'm I'm perhaps getting caught up, uh, hung up on that. It's been forever since I played EU4, so it's hard for me to remember everything. Regularly, if your government allows it, you could call a parliament. This sounds cool. Uh, if you don't do it, uh, if you don't do it often enough, the states will start to get irritated. But each parliament had issues that needs to be resolved, and the states will have agendas that they want done for their support. Of course, you have options to push through what you want to the parliament if you are willing to accept the demands of the state, like changing a particular law. So great. Uh, if, if there's a if this parliament is a nice little mini game that lets you kind of jostle and uh, try and maneuver your way around your estates, I think that that's a cool thing. 
Another part of the government is the cabinet, which also grows in size as you become more advanced. Fantastic. I really think that focusing on personalities um, is something that should be done more in the non-CK games. I think it's done to a fine enough degree in the CK games, but it really helps for stuff like storytelling, and it makes the game a lot more accessible to um, the wider audience, I think. Uh, this is something that can be viewed as a hybrid between EU4's advisories and CK2's council actions. Um, I, my understanding here, so I commented, why isn't Johan talking about Victoria 3? Um, and someone responded in the comments, uh, the reason why is because he worked on Vicky 2 and not Vicky 3, so it makes more sense. Is this another case of he worked on CK2 but not CK3? I assume this could be the case, uh, in which case, because there's a council in CK3, uh, but okay. Some of you may remember the domestic policies from EU2 and EU3. This picture takes me back, that's EU3. In Project Caesar, we are bringing back the ideas uh, in the form of societal values. Again, the language here, uh, the language in here heavily implies EU5, right? From EU2 and EU3. In Project Caesar, we are bringing back, bringing the idea back this here uh, in the form of societal values. Bringing the idea back, it's not bringing it back if you're appropriating it for an entirely new game, right? And so I think that this bringing the idea back, again, heavily implies that even if we're nailing down the name or nailing down the start date, uh, it could be something other than Europe Universe Solace 5. Now, that doesn't make sense from an IP perspective, in my opinion, because well, why would you use your IP that has... It makes more sense to use the IP that's already extremely popular. But if you're bringing the idea back, then that means it had to have been in place in the first place. Um, and so, again, this, in my opinion, heavily implies EU5. There are seven we took from these games, one that was split in two, and we added four new ones, bringing a total of 13 societal values. I really think there should be an underlying type of cultural mechanic in Victoria 3, and societal values sounds like something that could that could be a thing. Now, uh, I don't think that's exactly how it worked in EU2, or EU3, rather. I don't remember EU3. I think this is a I can't... I, like, the national ideas, I can't remember, man. It's been too long. I haven't played in forever. Shout out to Sliders. Big nice. Um, societal values are primarily affected by what other games, uh, what other actions you do, uh, like what policies you pick or laws or reforms you pick. Uh, as with many other things in the game, this is not an instant action, but gradually changes over time. This is something that happens in Victoria 3, uh, equilibriums that change over time. It makes the game a lot harder to learn, but I think I like it uh, in general. But um, this is just... Uh, when stuff approaches equilibrium, so in order to actually learn, if you like study psychology, you learn that the best form of reinforcement is like instantaneous after you take an action. And if something just changes in equilibrium, like in Victoria 3, if you change, uh, uh, if you add like uh, something that gives you literacy, it doesn't actually instantly give you literacy, it just changes the equilibrium. And so you don't actually feel anything uh, on the short term. And so it's a bit interesting because. Um, uh, uh, you're, it makes the game much harder to learn because there's no reinforcement instantly. We have this here, but I think it's a better and cooler system for a game. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting. We have gradual tapes over time. And um, societal values are primarily affected by other game actions you do. So is this going to make it so you get certain bonuses and malices depending on what you do once you've slotted in your societal value? Or... You just always have the societal values. Is he talking about the domestic policies? Um, okay, well, here's the U3. Um, next week, we will go into much de greater detail on the states and how they work. Again, if anyone has any comments about if this indicates a start date um, anywhere, I think that this is probably a lot less date indicating than the previous Tinto talk. Um, feel free to put it in, especially if you have an idea for the end date. This is... This is the one I'm concerned about. But other than that, have a happy Thursday. Uh, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. YouTube algorithm stuff. And other than that, oh wait, I already said have a happy Thursday. I did it out of order, but you could have a double happy Thursday. Yeah, that works.